Hello, guys. So why is Neo down so much? I mean, we're starting the, uh, the year on the wrong foot or something. Um, and it's uh, puzzling a little bit, especially that Neo uh, uh, announced the deliveries uh, for December, uh, which were great, and the and Q4, which were way above the, the, the uh, range. So, you know, things should be rosy. And knowing that, that um, they had uh, partnerships with, with Geely and Schengen and uh, a spin-off of, um, of the battery swap, the swap. and um, there's all kind of stuff going on and the investment from CYVN it everything looks positive but yet the, the, the stock is, is, uh, is negative right I think it's held down mechanically you know with bolts and, uh, and nuts and some tightening, you know. I think that's what it is, in my opinion, anyways. Um, and uh, and uh, you, you can see there's actually quite a bit of negative sentiment, uh, you know, going on. Uh, whether are mini, mini, these mini, me articles or, uh, or even the latest one actually from uh, uh, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs uh, note and uh, um, initiating coverage of um, of neo that's what the note says they start initiating coverage of neo uh, it's actually quite bearish quite bearish neutral with eight dollars and forty cents that's actually quite bearish but it is in uh, if you actually uh, uh, and i wanna i wanna just like i did the uh, to deutsche bank i want to do the same thing with uh, goldman sachs and see you know are they right are we missing something what's going on so if you actually look at the, uh, what they said in their assessment, uh, it's actually quite bearish. It's actually quite bearish. And the funny thing is that uh, Goldman Sachs um, uh, have some 15 million shares or over 15 million shares. So why would they have 15 million shares if they are so bearish? Uh, it's it's kind of puzzling, right? And makes you wonder and go to places. Uh, so uh, when you look at the, I actually wrote the comments down, so I'm going to read them to you just like I did with the Deutsche Bank and see where we go with this. Okay, Goldman Sachs on Neo neutral $8. Okay, uh, Neo losing market share in China. Neo losing market share in China uh, for vehicles over 300,000 RMBs. Is that true? As far as I know, Neo is actually, Neo has almost 60% market share in the pure EVs, of course, we're just talking pure EVs in that, uh, in that category, right? Now, of course, others will be joining that, you know, will be making luxury uh, SUVs and whatever. But, uh, but also NIO is, is approaching the or, or expanding into the mass production vehicle, the cheaper vehicles too. So to me, this is, this is more of a bearish comment more than anything else, more than any facts, you know. Anyways, the second one is that the Alp, uh, Alps brand, that the expected deliveries of 7,800, hello, 7,800 uh, uh, vehicles per month in 2025 is kind of optimistic. Okay, so, so now we're talking about 2025, a year from now. A year from now, that that kind of assessment is optimistic. I mean, it looks like uh, more like digging for for something negative to say. You know, so you think this is more valuable uh, than uh, than uh, talking about uh, um, the partnership for for battery swap? You think that this is this you know twenty twenty five monthly delivery of a sub brand is more valuable than partnership because there's no talk about the partnerships <laughs> okay uh, and that news free cash flow news free cash flow will stay negative uh, uh, all the way up to 2026 to the beginning of 2026 which means two years from now why is that how did you know that if you actually do the math for the deliveries, 
and uh, and you know that that uh, uh, news uh, R and D work will be reduced in time, right? Uh, and that the margins will increase, and in everything is working towards uh, uh, you know positive cash flow sooner. My assessment is the end of this year, 2024. So, what basis the, did it take you to 2026 or to the end of 2025? On what basis? I, I don't know. I'm actually puzzled with such a, you know, dark, you know, nasty cloud on the stock. I'm, I'm puzzled. The second thing I want to say is that uh, this um, comment that uh, Goldman Sachs initiated coverage uh, on NEO is actually false. It is actually false. It's not true. Why? Because Goldman Sachs covered NEO before. They covered NEO. Uh, Goldman Sachs is one of the eight banks that uh, um, uh, uh, underwrited. You know, they were one of the underwriters of NEO's IPO. Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, uh, Credit Suisse, uh, Deutsche Bank, and, and others, right? So they covered, they covered NEO before. Uh, but then uh, there was a time when they stopped the coverage and now they came back. So this is initial coverage? No, it's not. And, and I actually have, I looked up these kind of things. Remember, if you are a, a new investor from, from day one, you would know all of this. I went through all of that kind of stuff, including the mini articles from the, you know, the Seeking Zeta and, uh, and uh, all this, whatever, you know, these useless junk stuff that, that floods the internet. Uh, that was actually, that accelerated in uh, 2019. All you have to do is do some Google search and you will, you will find them. So anyways, I wrote some things down, like I said, so I don't forget them. Because I do have a habit of uh, forgetting stuff. That actually back in, uh, in 2019, in early 2019, uh, Goldman Sachs had a price target on NEO of uh, $9.76. $9.76. But then when, when new stock came down crashing because of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, lack of uh, funds and because they, they were spending too much money on R&D, uh, the stock came down to like two bucks or something. And that's when uh, Goldman Sachs came and, and changed the, the, the price tag from nine dollars 76 cents all the way down to one dollar and 47 cents that's what they did they actually put a price which was lower than the trading that the price that was that new was trading at uh so that was that was actually uh to get back to that nine dollars and 76 cents from the dollar 47 you have to multiply that by like you know, by six folds, six and a half, six some folds. <laughs> you know what I mean? By six and a half folds, right? Anyways, so then, then later on, when Neo got the cash, uh, and everybody uh, jacked up their assessment of uh, Neo stock, uh, Goldman Sachs had uh, a price of uh, I think was it uh, seven dollars, and then they jacked it up to seven dollars and seventy cents. But this is this was in July of twenty twenty like seven dollars and 70 cents right but then in december of 2020 the price was one new was trading around 50 bucks close to 50 it was just under 50. Uh, goldman sachs uh, initiated a huge positive note on new with a price tag of 59 dollars so back three years ago Goldman Sachs price of uh, uh, a new stock uh, was at $59. That's an increase of 666% from the $7.70. And so this is, this is the thing. Uh, Goldman Sachs has history of covering new stock and they did not initiate this neutral thing. That's one thing. The second thing is 
uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, when, when we were trading or when the stock was uh, trading, uh, 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 trading around $20, uh, Goldman Sachs was nowhere to be found to tell us, are we doing something right? Are we doing something wrong? What's going on? What's happening? No, 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 no. All of that was just, uh, you know, uh, no issue, no talk, no nothing. And, uh, you know, so the price went from the dollar twenty something all the way up to over 60 some dollars. And that's when when Goldman Sachs jumped in and they they uh, they uh, made a uh, they uh, put a price tag of fifty nine dollars three years ago. Well, the question is 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 Neo now today worse than three years ago when they didn't have cash, when didn't have their too much mod too many models, when their infrastructure was next to infrastructure was next to nothing when they did not have a, a chip design, when they did not have a phone, one, I mean, is, is Neo today really worth $8.40 when it was worth $59 back three years ago? That's the question. Same thing, same thing with Deutsche Bank. You know, three years ago, Deutsche Bank's price was uh, $50, which means that, that these analysts, they actually follow each other. They, hey, you know, the price is this and I don't want to be left uh, behind or whatever. But if in reality, if you want to uh, give the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, stock a fair uh, technical value or real value, you, you would base it on the model. You would base it on, uh, you know, on what's going on with the, with the company and not that, hey, other analysts, have high price, so I might as well, you know, go up with that. And it's funny that when the Deutsche, when uh, Goldman Sachs put the price at fifty nine dollars, that did not last at much at all, uh, and it, it came down crashing after that. It's so. To me, I think what's happening is that uh, we should be depending on ourselves, as far as the assessment, as far as uh, everything, because when the stock was went up from the dollar twenty dollar dollar thirty all the way up to sixty dollars these analysts were not even there they actually tried to catch up with the stock that's what happened okay uh, uh, I'm sure uh, you know they are doing whatever is best for their own financial institutions and we really need to as retail investors and here's the lessons learned the big lessons learned, the lessons learned from uh, these analyst comments or from whoever, you know, puts, uh, you know, from, uh, like I said, the, uh, seeking uh, whatever, uh, whatever. We need to learn a lesson. A lessons, the big lesson learned is we need to separate ourselves from, from all of that. These guys, they work for their own organizations. They're doing a great job for their own organizations. Good for them. We need to do our own research. We need to do our own, uh, our own uh, uh, you know, assessment of things and see if uh, does this make sense or not. And not necessarily react to what's happening. Not necessarily react because that's, that's what happened. If you... If you actually back in the day, you know when uh, when uh, Neo was in the fifties, and you and you see the price at fifty, but then Goldman Sachs comes with fifty nine, you would be encouraged to buy. You would say, "Hey, you know, there's fifty nine dollars, so I still have like twenty percent up." You would be encouraged to buy. You buy, and then you hold, and you go on vacation, and you come back, and and and, and life changed for you. This is why it's so important to do your own research so important it's not a joke it's not a joke we we have our own kind of little tiny tiny community or you know chit chat mini tiny group that we chit chat with each other and that uh, we we got nothing to do with others everyone will do what's best for them shorts will do what's best for them so we should not expect anything that we should not expect that anyone out there is trying to help us we should not expect that. It's actually puzzling. I mean, Goldman Sachs has 
more than 15 million shares. And yet this is so bearish, it's so bearish. And Deutsche Bank also has bearish uh, uh, comments. But the Goldman Sachs has even more bearish comments on this in this regard. If if anyone, in my opinion, has uh, a closer or or relatively technical um, analysis, that's uh, mini fair, mini fair. That would be J.P. Morgan. That would be J.P. Morgan uh, because of the of the, of the fact that they use uh, uh, actual numbers, um, some some uh, technical work that makes some sense and even with that i think their assessment of something like 18 bucks is still it's still low neo is in, let me let me put it this way in my opinion in my opinion there are two companies that are investable in the ev market two companies period and that is tesla and neo these are the only two companies that are worth investing in that actually deserve to be to to have investment Lee Auto is does should not belong there at all, and we, we should do it. this. I, I'm even shocked that someone would invest in that. Uh, Axe Bank, same thing. Too tiny, too small, too. They don't have nothing as an investment. Rivian, well, Lucid, no, Lucid, too many problems. I don't see that to be to be a good investment. Not for me, anyways. Rivian, too young, too small, too, you know, and, uh, and the value is actually even higher than, than Neo, uh, even though, even, even if the fact that you consider uh, a Chinese stock like Neo, right, it's still too, too high. The only company that is worth investing in uh, uh, is, other than Neo is, is Tesla. That's my opinion. Anyways, do your own research. This is just my uh, chit chatting. Uh, I learned the lesson that do not depend on anybody. Analysts don't work for you. Analysts, they have customers, they have bank, they have their own institution. They just don't care about anything uh, outside that. That's what my, my understanding is. Okay? Thanks a lot, and bye-bye. Uh,